we've talked about an amplitude, and an amplitude is a, is a vertical stretch shrink. We've done up, down, and we've done horizontal stretch and shrink. That's when the period changes. What we haven't done yet is moving things left to right. Okay, so it's kind of analogous to this. So like if you had a parabola, like if you had y equals x minus 2 to the second, remember that just means you move the parabola to the right 2. Or if you had a parabola x plus 3 squared, that would move you to the left 3. So phase shift works the same way. It's just a, the name that we give to the trig function. And in electronics, phase is kind of a big deal, okay? I can think of a lot of things when, like, speaker cabinets are out of phase, hiccups on a guitar are out of phase, okay? There's even an effect that guitar players use called a phase shifter, which actually manipulates that sound wave in a certain way that changes the, the way the sound works then. Okay, so phase shift is something you'll hear about if you study electronics quite a bit. So basically it goes like this. Uh, the way the textbook does is like this. We're going to look at this structure. A is still the amplitude. The period is still 2 pi over omega, omega being the number in front of x. But then the phase shift is just going to be this number. And that, by the way, is the Greek letter phi. So it's just phi over omega. Okay, that's, I'm just going to use the same letters that, that, uh, that our textbook does. And that gives you the phase shift, and it's left or right, depending on whether it's plus or minus then. Uh, the other thing is, if you factor out the omega, out of, if you factor it out, you would get this form. So just factoring that omega out, then it looks like this. So your phase shift is this number right here. Okay. Now, what I usually like to show students is just put it in the factored form, and then whatever that number is, when you put it in the factored form, is going to be your phase shift. So I'll kind of go through that as we, as we run through these problems then. All right, so to begin with on this example, the first thing we're going to do is we're only going to focus on sine and cosine in this, in this section. We're not going to do phase shifts of the other trig functions. They all work the same way, though. So the amplitude on this one is 3. Okay, we do, whenever we deal with sine and cosine, we have an amplitude. That just means that the max is 3, the minimum is negative 3, and then that minus 1 is going to switch everything down. Okay, the period, the formula is 2 pi over omega. Just make sure that you get a positive number. Omega is 1. Omega is always the number in front of x. So this would be 2 pi over 1, so therefore the period is 2 pi. Okay? If there's no number in front of x, the period is 2 pi okay? on a sine or cosine. Okay? The phase shift is going to be this number, so that's going to be pi over 2. And since that's a minus, that's going to phase shift you to the right. We've already learned how you know, all other functions work. If it's a minus, it goes to the right. If it's a plus, it goes to the left like that. Okay, all right, so that's how that goes, and then the minus 1 is taking you down 1. All right, so that's what we have. Amplitude's the number in front of the sign. The period is 2 pi over 1. The phase shift is pi over 2, and then down 1. The only thing different with this problem is we're figuring in the phase shift. Okay, the increment, you do the period divided by 4. So the period is 2 pi, so we do 2 pi over 4. And then that reduces to pi over 2. Okay, so that means that's how we're going to set up the x-axis. Okay? All right, now when we do a phase shift is when we do the graph, what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to set up the increment of the x-axis is pi over 2. So we're just going to label this pi over 2 and then just climb up by pi over 2. Then you would go to 2 pi over 2, of course, would be pi then this would be 3 pi over 2, and then 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. And I'm going to carry it out one more to um, 5 pi over 2, like that. So again, I'm just counting by the numerator, and all we're going to do is one period. Typically, the way I uh, want you to do most of these problems is just graph through one period. And if you have a phase shift, 
the easiest way to graph is just to start that first point at the phase shift, okay? All right, so let me show you kind of the strategy that we're going to do on this. I'm going to write the, the function that we're working out over here, and we're going to kind of take this inside-out approach. So we're only going to focus on graphing the sine of pi over 2. All right, now all that means is it's a sine wave with every point being shifted pi over 2 to the right. Okay, so this is kind of how you think through this. First of all, if you just did y equals sine of x, then, uh, then it would go like this. So let's just uh, do this like this, just make the y's go by 1, uh, like that. Now this is basically what I'm going to have you do, and you can do this in your head. All you got to remember is the sine of 0 is 0. Okay, so I'm going to start that point right there, just lightly. That's not the final point, but I'm going to start right there. I'm just looking at graph of y equals sine x. The next point on sine x is the maximum. Then it goes to the x-axis, then the minimum, and so forth like that. So those are five key points on the sine of x. So since we have a phase shift, what you're going to do is you're just going to move each one of these points over to the right pi over 2. So move that. Move each one of those like this, okay? And I'm going to put a, a basically another dot on this. So you can do this all in your head. You don't have to write that original wave unless you need to. So just move this point here, and I'm going to kind of cross that out as I go. Move this point here, and so forth, okay? Then the rest of it follows the cycle. So it's going to go like this, like this, and like that. Now I'm going to erase those original points that I had, because now what we've done is we've got, the, we've got the phase shift. So really, this is in practice, this is what you do. You know that the sine starts at 0, 0. Since it's a phase shift, just start that first point there, and then go through your basic pi two points. Everybody with me there? So that's just pi over 2 to the right. Now we're going to do this same thing that we always do. If you look at these y values, these y values are 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So what we're going to do is just modify these points. So we're going to do 3 times 0 minus 1. Now we're tying in those two things. We're tying in the amplitude change and the down 1, okay, to do that. Then we're going to do 3 times 1 minus 1, and then back to 3 times 0 minus 1, 3 times negative 1 minus 1, and 3 times 0 minus 1. Okay, so again, what I'm doing is I'm modifying the y values of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. That will give me where the final points are. Then I've got my graph. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1. Okay, so on my final graph, I'm just going to do this. That point moves there. 3 times 1 minus 1 is 3 minus 1, so that's 2. So the second point moves there. And then the next point is negative 1 again. So the third point goes to negative 1. Uh, next point is the fourth key point goes to negative 5. Okay, so I'll move that down to negative 5. Hold on, am I off track here? 1, 2, 3, 4... No, 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 teacher, what's negative? I knew something was wrong there. <laughs> okay. I, it just wasn't matching up the way I expected it to be. So that's actually negative 3 minus 1, so that's negative 4. So that point will go right there then. All right, so then, uh, then, then the next point goes to negative 1. So your graph is going to go like this through those key points like that. That's the final graph right there. So it's been phase shifted. Okay, the idea is everything has kind of been taken care of here. It's you, you phase shifted that original point zero, zero here. Then once you got that cycle on the sine x, then you just modify that. So you can see that the amplitude's changed. Okay, like the distance, half the distance from there to there is three. The amplitude's three on that. And then everything's been moved down. One. So that's the way I usually teach that, is just to uh, do it like that, 
and you can do just basically arithmetic. Instead of having to do it in three or four stages, you can usually get these point problems down to where you can do them in two stages, okay? And a lot of the work you can do in your head. All right, is there any questions about what I did? So if you have a phase shift, that's where you should always start your first point and then cycle through your five key points from that phase shift, okay? All right, let's go ahead and look at uh, this example two. I'll do a cosine here. Okay, so uh, with this one, first of all, the amplitude is two. Remember, an amplitude is a positive number. Okay, the period, the formula is two pi over omega. And this problem, omega, is 2. So you have 2 pi over 2. So therefore, the period is going to be pi. The formula for sine and cosine is 2 pi over omega. Okay. Now, the phase shift, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you two ways to do this phase shift. Okay. This is not in a factored form. We're going to go down and do the factored form. And you can do the phase shift either way you want to. I usually like students to do the factored form. So let me write this at the side like this and show you what I mean by that. Okay, the last problem we did was in the factored form. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the number in front of x and we're going to factor that 2 out of there. So it goes like this. We have negative 2 cosine, then I put a bracket, then I put a 2, and then a parenthesis like that. Okay, so I factor out whatever's in front of x. So when x would go there... Well, what would go here is, sometimes this is hard to do in your head, you would just do pi over 2 divided by the 2 that you took out. Okay, so if you do that, you would have pi over 2 times a half. So that would give plus pi over 4, like that. Okay, now again, I'm, you know, you're not used to factoring, uh, getting fractions too much, I think. But what you always do to get the phase shift, you do that divided by that. If it's not in a factored form, you do this divided by that. So that's the phase shift is pi over 4. And check this. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times pi over 4 would be 2 pi over 4. But what's 2 pi over 4? It's pi over 2. So it checks. If you factor something, you know, you want to go through and check and make sure it's right. So uh, the factored form is negative 2 cosine of 2 times x plus pi over 4 minus 1. Okay, so that phase shift is this number right here, pi over 4. Now, which way is it, left or right? Since it's a plus, which way would it be? It'd be to the left. So that's a left phase shift of pi over 4, like that, okay? So that's the way I usually teach that is to do that. You could also do the phase shift this way. I mean, it's the same thing I did. You just do pi over 2 divided by 2. You take that number divided by that. If it's not in a factored form, you'd get the same answer. Okay. The vertical translation is plus 1, so you're going to go up 1. And then the increment of the x-axis is the period, whatever that is, divided by 4. So the period's pi. And the phase shift is, or, or pi, periods pi, pi over 4 is pi over 4. So that's going to tell you how you do the x-axis. So you want to kind of start these problems always by finding all the, the key pieces. The amplitude, the period, the phase shift, the translation, increment of x-axis, whatever you have. And this is an example of a problem that has a little bit of everything in it. This is, to me, as complex as it can possibly get. I've got every number in there that you're going to look at here. All right, so when we put the graph together, uh, we want to go like this. So just count by pi over 4. The increment's pi over 4. So it would be pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Then 3 pi over 4. Then 4 pi over 4, which is pi and then 5 pi over 4 like that. Now we are going to go a little bit to the left on this, and we're going to go to negative pi over 4 like that. Okay, and let's see. I will just probably do the y's by, by 1 again. We can go all the way up to 5. 
and all the way down to negative 5 like that. All right, so I'm ready to kind of start putting this thing together now. All right, so this is kind of what you want to do. Okay, if you look at the function, we're going to go inside out. So the part that I'm highlighting in yellow is what we're going to do. Now, this 2, that just changed the period, so ultimately it changed the increment. That's already done, okay? We changed how, the, how we scaled the x-axis, so that 2 is kind of taken care of. So what we're going to do is start at the, at the phase shift. So you always want to start at the phase shift. All right, and this is ultimately what you all want to know how to do, okay? You want to remember that the original point on a basic cosine is 1. The cosine starts high, then goes down and cycles like this. So what we're going to do is the cosine starts at 0, 1. Well, we're going to phase shift that pi over 4 to the left, so that first dot starts there. Okay, just think about what an original cosine looks like, but instead of starting it there, start it at the phase shift, which is pi over 4 to the left. Then cycle through these five key points. Okay, and then we're going to modify those points the same way I did on the last problem. Okay. Right? So what we do is now we tie in the negative 2 and negative 1. And what that's going to do is it's going to change the amplitude. It's going to reflect it because it's a negative 2 right there, then move it down 1. So it's all arithmetic. So we're going to do negative 2 times that y value of 1 minus 1. And then we're going to do the same thing with all five of these points. Then we'll do negative 2 times 0 minus 1 negative 2 times negative 1 minus 1, negative 2 times 0 minus 1, and negative 2 times 1 minus 1 like that. Okay, so again, you're always just kind of modifying on a cosine and sine. Those are the points that you're modifying. Okay, so work it out. That's going to be negative 3. This will be negative 1. This will be negative 3, negative 1, and then negative 3 like that. Okay, so that's where those points go to, and then we're ready to just put those dots and put it all together. Okay, so what I'm doing, and see, you can do this in your head. You can write this down, or you can do this in your head. You're doing negative 2 times 1 minus 1, so that point moves down there. Okay, this point right here moves down to negative 1, and I think I made a mistake right here, didn't I? Okay, I caught that because I'm now expecting where this to go. 2 minus 1 is 1, so that point moves there, and then the next point moves down to negative 1, then down to negative 3. Okay, so now it's got the cycle that I can see, so the final graph would look like that. You just need to get those five key points accurate. That would be one period like that. So again, I started at the phase shift, okay, and that's whenever you have a phase shift, to me, that's the whole key to graphing is just find all the parts, start at the phase shift, and then modify that whatever numbers are affecting the y values. That's what's outside of the cosine, and that's it. Okay, what do you think? That's as complicated as it'll ever get right there. That has got everything in the, in the problem. And mostly, there's arithmetic going on there. Okay, that's the simplest way to do that. That way you don't have to do that in several stages. All right, any questions? Okay. All right, I, the other thing I wanted to do today, I won't do the whole section, I think, on here. It's just kind of finish up by showing you how to do a sinusoidal regression on your calculator, and then I'll just do a little overview on, the, on Wednesday's test. So get your calculator out, and I'll show you what I want to do. I just want to finish up with this example three, and then next week we'll I'll do the rest of this section. All right, so what you want to do on here is we're going to put this data in, and um, you want to go to your stat button, and then go to edit. Okay, if you have something in your lists, clear them. The way I clear lists is Blink on the L1, press clear and enter. Your best always to just clear the lists. 
if you've got anything in there. We, we've done regressions. We haven't done sinusoidal yet, though. Okay? So what this is doing is it's giving you a decade and the number of hurricanes, okay, and seeing if this has some sort of a cycle. So you want to just go down uh, L1 and just put the numbers 1 through 9 in it, okay, like that. So just put that in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. Okay, and then when you go to L2, you want to just put in the number of hurricanes, major hurricanes. So 17, 16, 29, 33, uh, 27, then back down to 16. Okay, so I think I got all my data in. Okay, so you want to get your data in. Now it's going to follow a kind of a sine wave on this. And um, the next thing I want you to do is the window. You know, let's get the window set up on this. You also want to make sure you're in radian mode. So you want to check your mode right now. If you're in degree mode, move over to radian mode because we want to get our sinusoidal regression in terms of real numbers. Uh, the window is going to go like this. Let's go 0 to maybe 10. I'm just, the X's are going from 1 to 9 on here. So let's just go 0 to 10, go a little bit further out. The Y values, we're going to go, uh, I think I'll have you probably just go 0 to 35, because the biggest value is 35, and then maybe scale that by 5 or something like that. Okay, and then we're going to do a graph on here of this data. Okay, so that's the window that you put in. Now, what we're going to do is if you want to do a graph, you go like this. You go to y equals and you get the plot turned on. Because right now you want what you want is you want those data values to come out. So if you do a scatter plot, you want to get that plot turned in. You don't want anything in y1. You just want it to be set up kind of like that. Okay, then type graph. And then that's what your data looks like. So does that kind of look like a sine wave? Yeah, kind of. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let the calculator find the sine wave that best fits the data. Okay, we're going to do next week, I'm going to do one example where you approximate this by hand. So this is basically what you do. So you go to your stat button, and then you go to calc. And then we've done all these regressions before. If you scroll down... Eventually, you should see a sine regression right there. So you want to get all the way down to doing that sine regression like that. So you just press Enter and then go down to where it says Calculate, and then it should come out. And then that's what we're going to write down. I hope it comes. It takes a while. I always find this to be a little slow. Okay? So that would be the sine regression. And it's figured out everything for us, like the phase shift and all that kind of stuff like this. Okay, So the answer, we're just going to take what I've got on my calculator and just write the answer. So it would be y equals, and what's coming out is a sine bx plus c plus d. Okay, So we would have, and I'll just round off to one decimal. So 9.5 times the sine. B is, we'll say, 1.2x plus C, which we'll round that to 2.9. And then plus D is going to be 24.1. Okay, so that's what the calculator does. It's just the same concept as what we did with different regressions this semester. So that's called a sinusoidal regression. Let's see how good the calculator did. So go to Y1. And then just put in this answer. So, and you want to be in radian mode or it won't work. So, 9.5 sine parentheses 1.2x uh, plus 2.9 and plus 24.1. And then just type graph and see how nicely it fits through that data. Ah, look at that. That's pretty nice. Okay, calculator did good. And it's a statistics problem. You don't ever learn how to actually by hand do regression unless you take a, a stats class. 
And all you'd ever do in there in this day and age is just get a feel for how it worked because it's complicated. It's something that nobody does by hand anymore. I mean, because it's uh, computers, you know, there's so much number crunching on regression by hand, you just want the technology to take over. Okay? So that's kind of the same thing. You want to know how to do a sinusoidal regression uh, to model the data then. Okay?